long distance PBA players perspective, the 2020 PBA Players Championship and the two players from the title match joining us, Bill O'Neill and EJ Tackett. Thanks guys for walking us through this title match. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having us on. So EJ, you're the top seed here. You're waiting to find out who you bowl. And the previous two events, you finished eighth and then seventh in Jonesboro and then the Tournament of Champions. Kind of similar to last season in some respects. You had the most top tens of anybody in the entire PBA in 2019. Bowling better every single week. Um, I missed a cut in Dallas, uh, got a check in Oklahoma. Then uh, we went to Jonesboro and uh, you know I finished uh, eighth there, had a run at the show. Couldn't finish it off. Uh, the same at the TSC. I, I felt like every single week I was bowling a little bit better. And when we got to the players, I think, um, you know, I, it just, uh, it all clicked that, that week. And uh, I was able to put, put together a bunch of really good scores and, and lead the tournament. And then, Bill, you qualified third. You led the previous week at the Tournament of Champions, ended up finishing second. And on your way to get to EJ, you got to avenge that loss to Chris Prather. Uh, and then you face off with Jason Belmonte, a player you really enjoy beating. Um, how'd you come back off the, the runner-up in a major, immediately get back on another major and take out two of the top players to get to another of the top players to try to win this major championship? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty difficult to, to refocus, you know, at that point when you come off a disappointment like that and, um, you know, to try to get back in like a day, literally a day later we had practice. So... Um, I think it was good probably that I didn't have a chance to really think about it, you know, just right into the next event and, you know, I, I was bowling well throughout the week and then, you know, kind of forgot about the, the previous tournament, just, you know, doing my job and then uh, I made the show and, and uh, when I was sitting there as the third seed, I was, I was begging for Chris to win because I, I needed to bowl him. I, I, I couldn't, you know, he beat me like three times in a row. He won all three tournaments that he beat me at. Like, I was like, I have to bowl this guy. I, 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 gotta, I have to beat him. Um, and I was happy that he won, and, and uh, he, uh, you know, he, he didn't bowl his best game um, against me. And then, uh, and then I bowled Jason, and, and he, you know, the last couple of times I've bowled him, I've been pretty fortunate. He's bowled, you know, pretty bad games by by his standards. And um, you know, I caught a caught a Brooklyn uh, in the middle of a four or five bagger against him, so that was that certainly helped out. And then, uh, yeah, then I got the chance to bowl EJ, somebody else who uh, has notoriously uh, beat my butt. So it was good to. You know, I uh, get another crack at him. Yeah. So we, when I when I when I started here, I was pretty I was pretty confident in my my ball reaction. I uh, made a big move against Belmo and jump way in and try to get my hand around a little bit. Uh, you know, and I knew that you know, especially after the week before splitting in the first frame against Chris, I really needed to get out and, and have a decent start. You know, at minimum a decent game. So. Uh, I'm trying to get out and stay, stay comfortable and, uh, you know, just get my hand around and try to throw to the right. Yeah, and um, I know I watched the, you know, previous matches and stuff, and I saw that you were thinking about moving in, and you ended up doing that, and I actually was pretty excited about that because I felt like my chances um, against you from that part of the lane were, were really good. Um, I feel like over my career, I've been a little bit better in that part of the lane than you have. And obviously playing straighter, you've always been a little bit better than me. So um, I, I was very confident in uh, us being that close um, about me being able to really bowl a good score and put some pressure on you and, and have a really good chance to win this match. Yeah, sure. I mean, I would totally agree with, with all that. Um, you know, for, for me, there was no chance of moving back closer to the right. They were just, the lanes were too cooked. So there was just no way I was going to stay out there. So uh, I think me being able to stay with a, you know, super strong ball is what, is what helped me out. Especially on TV, um, I try to do that more more than not is uh, overshell just because I know that my mistakes are, you know, generally going to be a little bit firm. Mm. So, you know, if I, uh, especially when I, you know, your adrenaline gets pumping and all that stuff for me, it's, you know, slow usually isn't uh, isn't a mistake. So I try to stay with the stay with the bigger ball. And um, yeah, I mean, if I had if I had my my choice of things, I wouldn't choose to be bowling you from this from this part of the lane. Uh, you know, certainly. But um, you know, over over the years, I've gotten more confident at uh, become kind of closer to my A game is like actually just getting in and um, getting my hand around the ball, um, especially with the ball that's just strong. 
that I know that um, you know is, still isn't going to go crazy down the lane, uh, even if I like overdo it and and, and spin it too much. Yeah, and and this particular pattern pattern there at, at Wayne Webb's, um, we know that the bowling bowling alley hooks a lot. Um, so that honestly even gave me a little more confidence too. I mean, it bowled really well the whole week from from that part of the lane. And um, I was honestly, I mean, watching it now, like it looks like I'm throwing it really hard, but I was actually trying to throw it really slow, um, which is weird to, to see myself look like I'm throwing it that hard. And I'm like trying to throw it as slow as I possibly can um, because there was a little bit of hang down lane if you, if you threw it a little bit too hard, um, especially the ball that I was throwing was super clean and, and whippy. So anything that was uh, either spun around it a little bit or a little firm, it tended to not want to hook. And my first two shots, I had a couple of swishers there and you had one as well. Um, so I knew you know, by this point, I'm like, okay, well, here we go again. The last four weeks, the lowest score has been 289 to win. Looks like I'm going to have to not miss to win this match. <laughs> yeah, go, going back to what you said a little bit ago, I think uh, I think we all think we throw it slower than we actually do. I I see that all the time. Like, I'll, I'll, there'll be times where I'm like, this I this is as slow as I can throw it. There's no way the ball's going more than 15 miles. It's not possible. I can't throw it slower. And then I watch like that, you know, a, the four four bowling clubs of myself throwing them. Oh, that's really not that slow. It's actually kind of slow. <laughs> but that's yeah. what I can do. Yeah, it's pretty funny how like your your perception of what you feel on the lane to what is actually reality. Uh, that's why like sometimes you gotta you trust the trust the ball reps when they tell you that uh, you know you're doing you're doing certain things. Right, right, yeah. Because like like I said on this particular show, and I did it both times. I made the show here at the at the players uh, the last two years, where I was left and like trying to throw it really really slow, like as slow as. I'm comfortable doing just to give the ball time to react. And um, those two shots right there were maybe two of the best shots I threw the whole match. Um, both of them were 10 straight back. And obviously I'm like, well, I got to keep throwing good shots because I'm bowling Bill O'Neill, who's been one of the best that's, you know, ever been on our tour in these positions and you can't let up. Yeah, and I, I got up here, and I was, you know, I thought the same thing. I mean, I'm going to have to to bowl a big one. And uh, the shot I threw here, I, I didn't think it was uh, terrible. I, I missed it a little bit, um, so that's why, um, you know, it slowed down a bunch in the front, and then just had it just had nothing. It just, it, you know, it didn't grab in the right spot and got further right down lane than I wanted to. And so I got up on the spare, and I'm like, all right, I got to make sure I catch it and uh, really spin it so it doesn't uh, it doesn't roll out. You know, I didn't want it to I didn't want it to quit quit down lane and. Uh, and, and miss the eight pin and um i missed the eight pin you know, just not the direction that i assumed i was going to miss the eight the, the eight pin when i when i let this thing go i i thought i got zero and uh it, it certainly wasn't the best frame that i threw and i think you can see uh i'm like really really overthinking this the, the spare here and i definitely showed because i spent too much time thinking about where i was going to throw it then then just you know moving an arrow right and throwing it to the right and letting the hook right but even like um, on patterns like this, where they're a little bit burned, burned up, um, it's really easy to like miss because you know if you throw it too far right, you get on the other side, it's not going to hook. If you miss it a little left, the pattern's short enough, it does what it does there. So, I mean, sometimes when I have to feel like I have to hook at it, I'll even like move even farther left and throw it really slow. So I know my ball is not going to try to get on the other side of it, and I can still create angle. That's just what I would do yeah. in that situation. Or if I feel very confident, I might even throw straight at it. Um, yeah, I, and actually, that, that, that actually crossed my mind a little bit. I mean, if, certainly, if I had if the four pin was up and I had the bucket, I would have I would have thrown it straight, hundred uh, percent. It just looks so much different without the four pin there. I know it really does. And uh, yeah, then I got up on this shot here and threw another shot that I thought was okay. That I thought you know if, if the ball was doing the right thing, it would have just flat ten, uh, and it wouldn't have got that lazy down the lane. So I said, all right, you know, in order for you know. I, like man, he's gonna he's gonna keep striking, and you know, I'm gonna have to strike out in order to have any chance here. So I'm like, I gotta I gotta go a couple more left and and just spin it as much as the, as much as possible. Because at this point, there was no ball change. There was no way I was gonna I was gonna change balls because I was already I wouldn't have really had a I didn't think that if I changed balls, I was gonna strike out. There was just no way. It was gonna take me a couple frames to figure it out, and 
even if I did choose the right one, it was still going to be a be a guess. So I'm like, all right, just hope for the hope for the best here. And and then after you threw this shot here, I thought, well, that's it. It's all done. Well, and and after you, the two that you just threw, uh, you went light twice. I'm thinking, okay, you know, his ball's not doing the right thing. He might be trapped now. And this one, I mean, it was fun. It was two boards farther right, and it hooked. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So after this shot, I'm thinking, man, my area is like this. This 300 thing might be in play. <laughs> yeah, because I, I thought for sure, like when you threw it, I'm like, all right, that's a, at least something with the two pin. You know, I got back in the game a little bit and then hooked back and struck. And I was like, oh, that's, that's trouble. Because I thought, you know, especially as far left as you were playing, you know, left off your hand was the better, would have been the better miss. You know, if you're going to go two boards, it would have been probably better to be left off your hand than then to the right. So I actually, at, at that point, I thought I was, I thought I was sunk. I thought, uh, you know, I thought this was going to be at least in the pocket. And Yeah. And this was just uh, an auto correct. Um, you know, I, I threw the, the, the last one out the window and make sure you don't do that again, especially when you know there's a little bit of hang to the right. And it's just the old chicken wing. And, um, you know, I thought about the, the, the 300 million dollars, like it started creeping in my mind after that last shot. And, you know, it was just a lot, and I and I I almost re-racked because of it, and I should have um, in that in that instance just to like clear my mind and get back into into the game, and it was just a mental error. Yeah, I, I don't know if you do this as well, but I know like you said, you were throwing it slower than you know would be your your A game, and you because that's always when I'm throwing it as slow as I can. What you just did there is always my myth. It's mm -hmm. just you know kind of decelerated and over the top and and left and it always ends up like like that so i don't know if you do if that's something that you do yeah typically when i'm throwing it slow like my miss is like the one on the right line it's typically right if you if um you went back and looked at the previous players championship um i missed the head pin twice in bold i think 240. it's just um my my elbow just gets out in front of it like this and i just spin it you know, it's funny you look at like the shot tracer here and I'm like it, it, in my head I moved I moved like two and uh and it, it's like oh it's point four different than the last one yeah. <laughs> so maybe maybe I did maybe I did move and then uh you know because sometimes like I, I'll move and it just changes my angle and it doesn't right. necessarily change change where the ball's rolling especially if I'm you know if I make like a you know a two two and one or something like that it's really not going to be for me not not two boards at the at the arrows it's kind of more change into the the, the, you know the direction and um, just really I, I knew that this one had to be a strike if this one wasn't a strike I was pretty sure I was I was done and um, you know, those were probably the two best shots I threw the, the whole match as well and, uh, yeah, and yeah I, I said all right cool I got a chance at least I'm back in at least I can have an exciting last half of the game here which I, I didn't right. think was gonna was gonna happen got there, nice comeback. Nice yeah and I thought the same thing you got up and throw those two really good shots after I opened and you did exactly what we all want to do when, when an opponent gives you an opening. You know, I had a bunch of strikes in a row and I get up and, and, and have a bad frame Well, you get up and throw two perfect shots and apply the pressure right back on me, which what we're always, always trying to do in these situations. Yeah. You, you know, it's certainly uh, happened to all of us you know, when we go other, other great players that uh, you know, we've been in that position where we're sitting on the chair, whether it be in, in match play or a TV show. And you're like, yeah, I know these two are striking. I, I know for sure that this is going to, this is going to happen. I've seen this movie before. Right. I did, you know, you dealt with it for like 10 years of watching Norm and Pete and Walter do that. Every time, every time I left the spare, I was like, well, the next two are strikes. It's, yeah. It's the way it goes. It's crazy. But I came back and threw, uh, threw two really good shots again. So, um, you know, it's, it's the same thing. Now it's flipped. Now you threw those two good shots. I'm thinking, okay, I have to throw two strikes to apply the pressure right back on top of it. And I threw two, like those might be the the two best shots that I threw the whole game. Yeah, I mean, especially after splitting in the, you know, in the, uh, in the in the sixth and getting up on the same lane and, um, you know, having confidence just to get through it clean and know that it's going to hook. That's a, you know, it's a really good shot. And so I'm still I'm still getting up here thinking the same exact thing. I got I got to get two more. There's no way, you know, a, a spare probably isn't going to do it. Uh, you know, I thought, you know, 250 was my was going to be my my only chance and uh you know especially since you hadn't you threw eight shots and seven of them struck at the pocket so i was like man this is going to be this is going to be tough and um 
Yeah, that, that, that shot was was pretty good, and uh, you know, rung ten. So, I mean, you can see it's pretty close. It was like you know half a board further left than than the one uh, previous. You know, which isn't isn't a ton. And I guess when uh, you know, for me, it was a little because it was in. It stored a little bit a little bit longer and got a little bit behind, um, which I, I didn't think was actually possible uh, the, with with the ball that I was using and the way that I was playing lanes. I didn't think that I could actually. Get the ball to over skid and 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 ring ten. If I would have like, if I left a flat ten, it'd been like, well, it's, you know, no problem. I, I saw that coming eventually. I didn't think the ring ten was something that was entirely possible. Yeah, and I and off your hand, I was like, oh, that's a really good shot. And then it rung ten. I'm like, oh, okay, now he's bowling to thirty. All I have to do is like throw, like a strike in the ninth and just spare, and then I'm. I'm good. Even if I spare in the ninth, if I just double in the tenth, I'm like okay. So I have some air. I have a little bit of room here that I can make a little bit of a mistake, and and still have a chance to win. And I'll apologize for the big lows. <laughs> yeah, no, like you know what's funny is like I had a, uh, had a bunch of people you know after that and like talk about oh yeah you handled that well. I'm like how how, they, how else can you handle it? They're they're, they're kids. They were put in a when you put them right there, like it's just, it, it's just a, a recipe for disaster because they, they're not doing anything. They're just, they, did. they, they, they dropped something. They were trying to pick it up. They were, you know, like it's, not a, it's probably not a malicious thing. And uh, you know, I felt bad because now they feel bad. Right. I backed off, but you know, I because the first time I backed off, I did this. It was the same thing. You know, they were moving a little bit, and but I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to make them feel. I don't want to make it feel bad. Like it's not. It's a. It's a brutal environment for kids in general, and then also to put them right in, <laughs> right in the line of sight. There was a, uh, was a little tricky. Yeah. Yep. I mean, Bigelow's are really good friends of ours, and they they did feel really bad about it. But I'm glad actually you got up and struck. In this shot, I, I must have thrown it a little firm, or I spun it. I don't. I don't even. I thought it was good off of my hand. It was. It was in the correct spot down lane. Um. So I, I must have done one of the two, and I'm not sure which. More than likely, it was probably fast. Yeah, probably. I, as I was looking at, it, it was like it rolled over the exact same spot as one before, but yeah. it got further. You know, it got further right. Which, yeah, I, I would probably, especially with how cooked the lanes were, if you'd spun it too much, it probably would have overbound instead of gotten behind it. Yeah. So it probably was a probably was a, a speed thing, you know. And even at the, even at this point, I I, I thought that uh, I was like, oh, at least you know he's got a throw him in the tent, but I was pretty sure, you know, I was, I was sure you were hitting the pocket. And, uh, you know, I've watched you enough to know that usually you don't uh, hit the pocket twice in a row without, without striking. It's not something that happens to you, not something that happens to you, to your ball too much. Yeah. In a situation like this, you know, this is what we dream of like little kids to be in a, a chance to win a major throw a double. And I got up and, and again, I threw a really, really good shot. And I don't know how that didn't fall. Yeah, that one was that one. I thought was definitely better than the the previous one. Yeah, the only thing I can think of is that maybe the same thing that happened with my ring ten. It just maybe was, I don't know, a little. I don't know, a little left, and it got behind it. Yeah, the that's the thing. But off my hand, I, I was like, oh, that's that's a strike. We only need one more, and then the seven pin stands. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, now I'm sitting here and I'm like, wait, oh, I can I can win? Like I I was like. What, it was kind of a roller coaster of emotions from the eighth frame to the tenth frame for me because I, I rung ten and I thought I was I thought that was it and then you, you didn't strike in the ninth and I'm like oh okay never know and then two seconds later I'm like oh wait I, know, I can actually win this is uh, I don't know how this happened yeah so a lot of people will um, you know take re racks here to try to ice their opponent I I don't ever do that for the fact of icing an opponent. This was going back to that split that I threw in the six where I felt like I should have re-racked. So I always re-rack in these situations just to like gather myself, get my heart rate back down, and make sure that I throw a good shot and apply as much pressure to you as possible. Sure. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'd, uh, honestly, I didn't even remember that you re-racked. Uh, I think there's a lot of people that, that like read way too much into stuff like that. Yeah, it's, I mean, people I'm sure re-rack to affect, try to affect other people, but I don't know how much, I don't know how much that's really the I don't know what it does, really. Uh, yeah, I, I think players players kind of expect it to happen. So, um, yeah, you know, in those situations, you kind of expect it to happen. You expect your opponent to take a re rack, and um, sure, it's a big shot. You're, yeah, I'm, yeah, certainly not expecting you not to do that. You know, 
I, I get up here in the in the tent and I just like, all right, I have to spin it and you know, something happens to me when you know, when I go when I go bad, you know, press the situations or anything really is like when I push away my my front my right shoulder follows the ball mm-hmm. and I, I close off too much and then it leads to either it disasters in either direction. I can I can get the ball stuck behind me and I that's when I miss the head pin. Um, or I overcorrect and come back over the top. So I'm like, all right, I just gotta, I gotta spin it. I gotta keep that shoulder there, and and uh, you know, hope, hope for the best. I, I I knew if I if I if I just got it going to the right and got my hand around it, it had a it had a good shot. And uh, I liked this one more than I liked the um, previous one. But I mean, it, it, it wasn't that much different than ring ten. I think so it was possible than I was that. Yeah, and exactly. I'll be perfectly honest. Um, you know, sitting there watching after you rung ten on, on that on that lane the previous time, um, I thought both of the shots that you threw in the tenth were going to ring ten. They they almost they looked identical. Obviously, they weren't, but to my eyes, they both looked identical to the shot that you ring ten. And the only difference yeah. was they must have just picked up uh, in the right spot, like you said. The other one might have got down lane a little bit. And you saw you saw the six slap the ten out exactly the same way both times. So those are two probably two of the best shots that you know I've ever been a part of. Like you know, in winning or losing a match for uh, someone to throw. Yeah, then I, I did the same. Then I get the same thing on this shot that I did when I thought that spare. I just uh, massively overthought it, and I'm like, all right, uh, just flat ten, and just you know, and just you don't, have, you don't have to spin it because you're not. I don't want to get sick, so I'll just. I'm just gonna throw it over the target and kind of not hit it. And uh, when I, I guess I didn't pay attention to the direction I was going, so it was a little bit left. Uh, but it's a good, but, but because I didn't really, I didn't really over hit it. You know, I was able to quit and you know leave the four pin. Yeah, and off your hand, I honestly thought I'm like, off your hand, I saw I'm like, oh, that's left. Uh, that's a roll off. I, I thought it was gonna be. I thought you was gonna like six ten. Yeah, yeah. I, I really thought you was gonna get eight, and I'm like, okay, I got life, and then. Um, I saw the ball just lay there and not hook, and I'm like, "How did that yes. not like big four like?" Yeah, because it, 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 the fact that I didn't overhit it and the ball is so so strong, I mean, it's just a ball that's you know it's a bunch of cover and it just you know got in that spot and just you know, probably the same reason why it, it it leaves the two four eight is the same reason or two five eight is the same reason why it leaves the four pin there. Yeah, probably, and um, I was I was very very disappointed. I mean, that's the closest match that I've ever had. Um, major or not, um, I, I think I don't. I had the match with with uh, Butters last year that I had a roll off in, but that format's kind of set up for that to happen. Um, but yeah, this was this was uh, this was a tough one for me. The Players Championship has been one where I I, I kind of struggled at the first time uh, I ever bowled it because it's a little bit longer pattern um, and it always gets kind of cliffed, and that's something I really struggled with in the fir- first part of my career. And for me, um, over the last three or four years, I, every year I've, I've done a little bit better every time. And um, I really thought that, you know, this this time, like I'm, I'm actually gonna get this tournament. I'm gonna win this one at a tournament that I haven't had a lot of success at. But um, thanks for uh, thanks for taking that away from me there, Bill. <laughs> it's funny how things, how things work, because I thought the same thing the week before in the TSC. You know, I was like, oh, man, I led the TSC. I've never done that before. Like, oh, this is it. I'm winning. You know, you just feel, and it just doesn't work out. And, you know, things tend to, I don't know, it's such a weird thing, especially with TV. It's only one game. And, um, you know, we were talking before that the, this started about your uh, new match against Tommy Jones. And, like, that's one that you – Probably shouldn't have won. You know, he needs a spare and doesn't get it. And then this one, you feel it's just crazy how things can even out like that. Um, especially yeah. when you go for as many titles as as you have and as many as you're going to. It's just yeah. And it, I think uh, um, I think this was the, what the third time we had bowled for titles. Uh, first, is it the first one on television though? I think it was the first one on TV. The other two had been on uh, like Flow Bowling or whatever. Yeah. Because yeah. Uh, my first win uh, was against you. So thank you. Right, yeah. And then uh, well, the we, there's a lot of those. <laughs> and then uh, in Aurora, right? Yes. Yeah. So yes. this is, I think, the third time. But I did, I did, I, I did beat you. I think on your first show. You threw, uh, you threw the yeah, You did. Uh, yeah. It was a wolf. Yeah. Yeah. So I. So that's at least uh, at least in step ladders. It's like at least the fourth time we pulled each other. Yeah. 
you know, it's, it's crazy because we don't like our games are not similar in any way. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we, we've found each, you know, ourselves against each other and either in late match play rounds or, uh, you know, TV shows or, you know, flow bowling events qu- quite a bit. Yeah. It's weird how you see two people that are like so different in, in their approach to the game and, and their, their rev rates and, and rotations and all this kind of stuff. And even ball choices that we make during those times are, are complete ends of the spectrum. Because like you said, you're throwing a really strong bowling ball there. And I'm throwing a ball. It's got a little bit bigger core, but the cover is like super, super clean. So we're like in off the ends of the of the spectrum there. And it's um, it just proves how great this game is that we play that literally anyone from any spectrum at any time can have success. Yeah, and it just kind of goes to show that you can't bowl in in a box and you can't like say like, oh, I'm going to bowl like Bill or I'm going to bowl like EJ. You bowl how you bowl and then you fine tune things along the way to add different pieces so you can become a, you know, a complete package. But, you know, that you can't look at you or look at me or anybody else and say, I'm just going to do exactly what that guy's doing because you have to do what's natural and, and what, uh, you know, what's right for you. Absolutely.